was about to say something brown or something. You know, because you forget how close they Oh, jeez. This is just all spiral, just to take a little off, all right? Is this liquid eyeliner that you're using? No. Just what is it? It's a pencil. get some of your pancake because this is not really Can you just check that, please? Yeah, let's, let's take it. Hey, Sam, could you do me a favor? Do you mind doing something for Thank me? Thank you. Would you? Yeah. Where Can Sam go and get your pancake? Yeah, he's got it. Valerie's got it. You could ask for, ask for Valerie. Will you get ba ask Valerie for his yeah. pancake? Uh, Valerie for his pancake? Yeah, go ask for Val. Go we'll ask Val if she's got, yeah, Val, mixed wife. A tell her to, just tell her to, ask her to, for the makeup box just again. Is it okay? Are you going to be performing with Stevie? Uh, after your show? Uh, I might. Okay. Just so I make you this couple things. Wait, Sam, okay. Sam, Sam, it's okay. It's okay. I have the answer right in my purse. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of it. I have a little thing right here. Uh, maybe, I don't know. Not right now. I can't think of it. Okay. Okay. Here, I have some right now. Yeah, should just be fine. Can you turn towards me? Jack Douglas. That's right. Because Phil wound up producing an album that... Yeah. Um, Peter Wolf also says to say hello. Oh, yeah, Peter Wolf. Huh. How is Peter Wolf? He's fine. He looks great, I think. Don't you think? I miss him, yeah. He's actually... When he I'm didn't away, ask me to sing on his record, though. He was probably embarrassed, thinking you, of course, say no. Did you want to? I would have. I bet he would have died if he knew that. Well, I hope he wouldn't have died, but <laughs> maybe come close. Well, when I'm away, he's going to be filling in, doing part of my show for me. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe he'll have me on as a guest. It's this week. It's this week? Well, of course, I'm here. You're here now. What's this man here shooting pictures for? I don't know. Who is that? Gary seems to have taken care of it. So what's your favorite video on MTV? Um, the, one I've, the ones I've seen, uh, my, I, my favorite one is the... Uh, let's see, I've got a few of them. I like that one of the police when they're jumping around in the studio. Synchronicity. Is that it? Oh. Well, they're, they're in the studio and they're all, they're all wearing hats. I, oh, um, um, every little thing she does is new. I like that. I like, um, well, of course I like Cindy Lauper's. Uh, what, the lead singer of Van Halen? I don't know, you know him. who he is? I know, I know who his uncle is. I used to work for his uncle. I know, isn't that wild? Yeah, it it's a small a, world. As a matter of fact, his uncle gave me my very first, first job. job. I know. The first night I, I was ever in the Cafe New York. One? That's right. That's right. I have very fond memories of his uncle, Manny Roth. Yeah, Uncle Manny. Yeah. Well, Uncle Manny is the guy that gave David Roth his first radio. His first what? His first radio. <laughs> you mean his radio? Yeah, so, and Dave said, like, it's my Uncle Manny that got me in. His uncle man is a terrific guy. But it's very, it's such a. Does two David Lee Roth know that? Oh, yeah. Does he? Oh, I don't know if he knows that, that Manny that, gave yeah. you your first he job. He gave I'm a lot sure of people his their first jobs, as I remember. I'm sure I'm he sure does. I'm sure there were a lot of people that back down the street that, that worked for Manny. Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. Gordon Lightfoot? 
Yeah. Yeah. He, he, a lot of people. Oh, that's fascinating. Manny. Gordon Lightfoot. I worked for Manny as a matter of fact, in all afternoons from from 12 until 8 in the in the afternoon. I worked uh, also the day shift back then. You mean you performed? Or yeah. The, he he had a, a cafe, which stayed open until from 11 in the morning until 4 in the morning, and it was, there was constantly something happening on the stage. So I guess the more popular you got, the better your shift. No, not really. Uh, you never really did get popular there because people never knew who you were. They, nobody was billed, I don't think. Uh -huh. um, on the on the outside, nobody was billed. Once, to tell you the truth, you didn't pay after that. You pass a basket. And so after you play, you know, you, or a hat, or a basket, or a, a barrel, or whatever you wanted to bring. Uh, Wait, did you bring your own hat to be passed around? Oh yeah, that's why I started wearing hats. I was used to wear hats. That's why. Uh, so yeah, when most did, wouldn't the object be to get like yeah, a really well, little one so that people would feel bad because they think it was just like My hat was rather large. <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it, it was like a, a, you know, when you took it off, it, 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 it might have been a bag. <laughs> <laughs> a chef's hat. You know, yeah, there were big. people that came in. They played. Used to wonder why, why people used to play back then with big ten-gallon cowboy hats. And it's because. Because <laughs> they, they passed pass them around. Oh, you are? Yep. Oh, great! We got all that? Yeah, the bigger oh, the hat, the, the more money you made, you know? Well, I guess I should get to my, my real questions at hand. It's one thing that is striking me about this whole deal here is that there's a lot of excitement about this tour. Yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> Don't you feel that? Do you feel well, I, a, I feel that way on every tour. I've never done a tour yet where there hasn't been a great deal of excitement. And I've always felt the excitement. On every, on every tour, well, wherever the, wherever we play. Well, maybe not everywhere, but most everywhere. What made you decide to go back on the road now? To do this tour? Well, this is not the tour I wanted to do. I wanted to do a South American tour, and and, and uh, it just wasn't feasible at this time, so I took this tour. This is what, why I, this is why I'm doing this tour. There's no particular reason for it. Well, you wanted to do a tour. I wanted to do a tour, and I wanted to specifically to play South America. And uh, the old, uh, Bill Graham is about the only promoter I know that can get people to down in South America. And he tried to do it, and then uh, at the last moment, uh, I was sort of set my mind mentally to do something. And uh, uh, so, so um, we uh, did this, because the other one didn't come off. Yes, but can we try and c keep traffic from coming? Because that's what, the, if that, you know, shouldn't have that. Uh, um, but this has been a good tour. What kind of audiences have been coming to the shows? Mostly foreign audiences. Um, in France, we had mostly French audiences, and in Spain, we had a lot of Spanish audiences. In Germany, there were German audiences. What about Italy? Italy, they were mostly uh, probably Italian. <laughs> I don't know. Do you find that there are older fans that have been your fans since the 60s, newer people? I find all types of people, yeah. As the older ones, you know, they get so old, they might not want to come out, you know, because after all, you get to be this age, you get to be old, you know. And and at this, a lot of people, when they get to be in this in this age and age group, they, they it's harder for them to, to get out of the house. You know? It's harder for them to... Uh, sit in a big, big crowd with a lot of people. It's harder them to even, it's very difficult for them to even go to the record store and buy a record when they get to be my age. You mean really old? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, usually you have to have younger fans because uh, they're, the they're willing to go and, and, and you know, and, and go out in public and go to the shows. But most of the people who started out with me, I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. Some of them know. 
they still brave the, you know, brave the animosity of the world and, and, and manage to make it to the show. I've seen a lot of faces from the 60s, 50s. How's the reception? Well, the reception's always good. There's never any problem between the audience and, 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 and me. There's never been any, ever, any problem between uh, The only the problem is uh, other uh, media problems. I've met, I'm so, I'm so, I'm, for some reason, uh, the media uh, reportage on the shows I've done never has really been entirely accurate since 78. <laughs> this is true. No, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to go deeply into that, but I don't know why, you know, but if you go to the show, you'll see an entirely different thing than if you read about it in the newspaper the next day. Not all the time, but quite a bit of it. I didn't expect that answer, I know. No, but I don't think it's true that you've always gotten it. You know, I'm sure there are times where the A lot of times you read about negative response, like, oh, he went electric and uh, all the people booed or walked out. Well, these things are true. Uh, it's true to an extent, but, you know, you go to a show, you say, oh, it was all gospel. Oh, so the crowd booed and walked out. I said, it wasn't true. Maybe three or four people uh, maybe walked out. If three or four people walked out, I, I personally... I've never heard of it myself, but you know, there's never been a problem between um, the, the, the crowd and, 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 and me as a performer. If people want to go, they go. If they don't, they don't. If they go, they generally leave, uh, uh, in, you know, in a, in a frame of mind. Uh, they leave changed. It's, they, they're in a different frame of mind when they uh, came, you know. Some of them do. What is it about your show that you think changes people? Well, during the course of the show, I myself probably change, you know. So maybe people can pick that up, they sense that. And then and maybe they go through a few changes themselves, I don't know. Is that an objective? That's what I've observed, you know, and, and all, all the time I've been performing. Regardless of whether they leave change or whatever, it's, it is true that for almost as long as you've been performing, you know, people have been coming out to see you. And if there was anybody that, that could walk around with the title of legend in rock and roll, I, I don't mean to. It is you. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, that's because I've been around, it seems like, so long, you know, but. I think anybody, when they get past a certain age, is entitled to that uh, title. You know, you know and, uh, you just just to make it through all you have to make it through your title. Everybody is actually legendary in their own kind of way. You're legendary uh, to many people, I'm sure. Uh, but it feels, you know, I don't know. You, you, it's nothing you can taste. Or smell. It's uh, it usually has to do more with other people than than, than your own self. From my experience. Does that affect your everyday life? You mean the walk down the street knowing you're a living legend? Um, well, yeah, sometimes I guess. I don't know. What about from your point of view? When you think of who you're impressed by, is there anybody in rock and roll that you consider legendary? Uh, no, just the people that, are, that have gone on, you know. That's okay. Like who? Well, the people that I've known, uh, that, are, that I consider legendary. Well, all the early rock and roll people, you know, who aren't around anymore. Buddy Holly or Gene Vincent. Buddy Guthrie is legendary. A lot of people that you don't have too much information about are really legendary. Somebody like Robert Johnson would be 
comes with more all legendary. Jimi Hendrix is legendary. But if people sense that you've come through a certain heat and 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 and, and are still you know functioning in a semi-coherent type of way, I'm sure they'll treat you as a legendary figure. But if you know, if you go to buy a loaf of bread, and, and or you go into a restaurant to, to order a, a, a meal, and a check comes, you know, and you say, hey, wait a minute, I know you, there's, I'm, I'm a legendary person here, right? you know, this is not for me. They don't buy that. Have you ever tried that? Uh, yeah, I've tried that a few times. <laughs> no, I didn't tell them I was legendary. I'd say, I'll sign, I'll sign the check. I don't have it. I just know I'm a little short of cash at the moment. Can, is it okay if I just sign it? Yeah, people don't want to hear that. They sent you in the back of the dishes. Pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, something like that. Being that this is for MTV, we, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about videos. For instance, your history in videos it's actually pretty far. In fact, the subterranean homesick blues, that clip was probably one of the first. I think so. Well, yeah, but, but you know, the first videos were the movies they used to make. You know, Little Richard, Bill Can't Help It, uh, or, or uh, uh, my favorite videos are, are, are the Gene Vincent videos that he did when he performed in the movies. He was in the Bill Can't Help It. He also made a couple other ones, and they're very dynamic videos. You could play them today, and they would they would be far superior to most of the stuff that they're playing on the time. I seem to recall a lot of that in, in the late 50s. I, I saw some movies which had some performance in it. Uh, Johnny Cash once made a, uh, a video. Uh, it's not a, not a big, what is a video? A video is just lip syncing to a record. That's all it is, I think. I mean, we call them videos, right? But you're just lip syncing to a record. Or a, even a piece of film now is a video. So what's a video? I, I don't quite sure I know what a video is, except the, the, the market for video is, 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 is the market is new, but the, the form has always been there. Yeah, they, they did a subterranean homesick blues as a video. I don't know if it was a video. We didn't think of it as a video at the time. We just needed a piece of film to, to go at, at the beginning of the movie. But now videos as a promotional tool and as an entity. As They're very tool. important, yeah. I mean, it's hard to think of people who don't have videos, isn't it? How do you think your music lends itself to videos? I think it lends itself great to videos. I haven't found anybody to direct a real good video. I wanted to do a video of Neighborhood Bullet, and I had an idea. I thought it would have been great, but now it's too late, you know, because it's on that last record. But, I mean, if you're working all the time, you know, and your mind is just to com completely focused on so-called, you know, career aspect of things, well, then you're going to be doing all that stuff. You know, you're going to be compiling. You're just going to be taking advantage of every aspect of the of the game. And and uh, I, I just uh, just for me to make records and play live shows seems to be enough that I really want to do. I, I don't really want to get involved in, in taking charge and making a video. We did that movie with Ronaldo and Clara, mm -hmm. and that was enough for me. I, I don't like to be the head of. Uh, ordering people around, telling them what to do, and it's too much energy, you know. It seems, because of your film background, that you would, it would be natural for you to Oh, yeah, to I'd love to do it. We had, like I said, we wanted to do Neighborhood Billy, but for tr tr trying to explain it to somebody, what you see, and then draw up storyboards, I haven't found anybody that, that really uh, thinks a certain way that, that needs to be, that, you know, that, that like the German filmmakers or the English filmmakers, I mean, in the States, it's not on people like that. They just don't exist. They don't, they, they, the education doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't train them for that sort of thing, to think. You know, you, you, what they do is you get told what to think. Here, here's what to think. Well, when, you're, when you're doing something, it's like, here's what you're supposed to think about that. But, but you don't ever learn the process of how, how to think. You know what I mean? Or what's it, what you can do to be different, or, or how to expand things. This is what I think, anyway. This is my own humble opinion. Well, if you haven't found somebody to do it, why don't you do it yourself? I, I don't want to do it myself. It's too hard. 
Let me talk about Joker Man a little bit. How do you think that translated the song? I only saw that one time, and I don't even want to talk about that video. You know, that is nothing I really want to well, discuss. Well, okay, then let me ask you in, in general. You have a song, either Joker Man or Sweetheart Like You or a Neighborhood Bully that you're about to do. How do you approach visualizing the imagery in the songs? Well, Neighborhood Bully could have been. I, mean, I, I, visualized, I visualized Neighborhood Bully. I wanted to find... We had a couple of guys cast for Neighborhood Bully. One of those guys is Wrestler. Uh, I forget his name. He's, uh, um, Jerry Blackwell. He's a wrestler. Comes out of the Midwest. He would have been great as a neighborhood bully. And there were certain segments which I just wrote down one night, which I thought would look great on film, and, and it would be like a Fassbender movie. Have you ever seen his movies? It's something of that nature. But uh, what? I'm sorry. What? I've never have. What kind of nature do you? Uh, well, it's just. It's hard to explain. It's like somebody saying, "What's that song about?" I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's not about, it, it, that's what it's about. Have you heard the song? Yeah, I've heard the song. Well, what's it about? Well, have you heard it? Yeah, I've heard it. Well, that's what it's about. It's about that. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, but you referred to Fast Finder as like a style. And oh, I don't know yeah, he, well, he said he had, a, for me, I think he had about three different styles. He had a style he started out with, and he had a middle style, and he had his gospel period, and, and, uh, <laughs> and his blue period, and, and then he went electric. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about, about the album, finish the video for now. Um, the sound on Infidels that you got with Mark Knopfler is a little different than a lot of your past albums in that you took more takes, it's overdubs, it's a dub technique. Yeah, it doesn't sound as good as it should though still. It's okay, you know? But I, I, I heard a song, uh, I never listened to my records. <laughs> you know, and, I, and we were just in the store the other day, and they were, it was on the radio, Joker Man was on the radio. I couldn't, I couldn't stand the way it sounded. I just didn't like the way it sounded. I asked them, please turn it down. You never listen to your records? Never. Well, I will if, if they're on, but I mean, I don't go home and listen to my records. Why did you decide to approach recording Infidels the way you did? Well, we didn't really approach it any differently than any other record. Uh, we, we put the tracks down and sang most of the stuff live. It really, it, only later, when we had so much stuff, we recorded it uh, over uh, more, 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 th more things than were necessary for a record. And then when we started to... Uh, narrow stuff down, you know, to put on a record. Uh, I wanted to fill it up more, and I've never wanted to do that with any other record. I just wanted it to be fuller. A lot of records you'll hear, it's all, it's all filled up. Every, every, every note is, 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 is it's, it's already there for you. It's like, have you ever listened to an Eagles record? You know, I mean, it, one thing about the Eagles, you know, it's, the songs are good and all that, but if you listen to an Eagles record, every note is predictable. You know exactly what it's going to be before it even's there, you know? And, and uh, I started to sense some of that on, uh, uh, on Infidels, and I didn't, I didn't like it, because that's not my, my kind of record, you know? So we, I decided to redo the vocal, some of the vocals, because I knew how I was going to sound before they came out, you know? And I decided I didn't want to do that. I'd rather do live performance, so I just redo the vocals, and we added this and added that. But we didn't add that much. That record's not n not an overly produced record, like uh, most of these records. With the you know when they have synthesizers, the sound you don't have to think. I mean, because there's 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 all that sound that's already there. You know, the space is gone. And I personally like re records and sound. I like to hear the space. And recording sort of live in the studio, so it's sort of been traditional with you, which yeah. you did some, you know, retakes on this album. Did well, it no, affect no. the spontaneity? Man of Peace is live. Man of Peace is live. Sweet. Um, it's live on it. This is about half that record is live. It's live. License to Kill was live. Um, <coughs> Neighborhood Bully was live. Mm -hmm. That was just done like that. No overdubs, no... no well, License to Kill and, and Neighborhood Bully, it's interesting that you say they were recorded live, because that's something that was something that you did an awful lot of. And it also strikes me that those are two songs 
and sort of deal directly with contemporary social or political issues, which is also something that we've been away from. Why both of those things on this album? I think all my songs do so deal with social political issues. I mean, that's what that's why they call me protest singer. They all deal with that. But you hate being called a protest singer. Well, but it doesn't matter. I mean, that's what they, they call me anyway. It doesn't, what, do you, what does it matter what I care? What, I, what does it matter what I feel about what it is I do? I mean, everybody else seems to have their opinion. So what is it? What does my opinion matter? It just, it's, for this album, you dealt with it, for instance, Neighborhood Bully or Union Well, I try to put a little bit of everything, you know, onto a record. Um, well, you haven't tried to put that on a record for, you know, it wasn't around for Shot of Love, wasn't around for Say. Shot of Love was a bunch of, what, that's a sore point was with me, was Shot of Love, because I, Shot of Love to me, I think it was a great record. In a lot of ways, much better than Infidels, but, you know, Shot of Love, though, doesn't have a history. That's why that it, didn't, it wasn't accepted and it wasn't uh, a 28 million uh, platinum record. You know? That's why it, 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 it wasn't uh, a, a, a huge money maker you know? because uh, it doesn't have a history. That type of music has no history. <laughs> Just the same way Street Legal. I don't know if you ever heard that record. I made, I made a record one year called Street Legal. It has no history. There's no, there's no history behind it. There's nothing leading up to it. You know what I mean? And the same thing with Shot of Love. There's no history to it. There's no, well, where does that come from? Or why is he doing this? You know, I mean, they, they can't hang it on anything. I'm not sure why one album has more history than Well, that. Well, for, for instance, they record all my, most of my albums. They like, go oh, from this to that. Say, oh, yeah, well, this one's, oh, yeah, because this one was here. This one's here. You know, and this one's here. Oh, yeah, well, this is a logical extension of that. And, uh, oh, well, okay, well, this don't fit in, but this one does. And this is connected to that. And so it all makes sense. Here comes a record like Shot of Love, which don't make sense uh, uh, on any kind of that sociological, political, uh, romantic level. That's why, you know, it's people that, and people don't, can't relate to it because they, can't, they don't think that way. Everybody thinks, oh, I, you know, they know where everybody's at. Well, people don't think that way. So I decide, I don't care how people think. I'll make this record, you know, I'm going to make this record. That's what I think. So when you make it, you say, well, Okay, you made it. This is what I think. And everybody says, well, okay, let me think that. I, I ain't gonna buy that record because I don't think that, you know. But the sound of it was, was good, and, and uh, the sound of it was very good. The sound of? Shot of love, and, you know. But you're talking to me more about my records and, and what I do. I personally have, pr you know, preferences that other people don't have. I don't know what people want to hear, you know. And I, I don't know what they think they want to hear. We were talking before about Manny Roth, speaking of history, and how the, he was the guy that gave you your first job at the Cafe Wa on McDougal Street. When you look back to those early days, if I could delve into this a little bit, when you look back in your early days as a folk singer in the village, what are the things like that that stand out to you? Oh, uh, where? Like the Cafe Wa? Or Gertie's Folk City. Oh, all of it, you know. Uh, did you have to pass a hat there too? No, I not in, the only place I pressed a hat was uh, in, in uh, you know in those, in those uh, uh, coffee houses. I, I, I was paid a salary in Gertie's Folk City, and then the Gaslight when I played there, I think I paid about sixty dollars a week or something. And a lot, there's a lot of entertainers, you know, one after another, maybe six people, seven people, and, then, and you just constantly go from six o'clock in the evening until four in the morning, whenever it's your turn, you know, you just, now it's your turn, and then the comedian goes on. Bill Cosby started, actually, I was, I remember when Bill Cosby started. Um, Bill Cosby used to play the Gaslight, and I remember he, when he came to, to, to town, he came there, he, he, I was on the same bill with him for a long time. Bill Cosby, a lot, a lot of, actually, a lot of famous people down there. But what I remember about those days, I don't know. As I get older and older, it begins to fade <laughs> away. You know, my memory becomes a little more hazy. I'm not even sure it existed, actually. <laughs> well, since I know that we are getting time, I'm just going to wrap things up. If, if you can stand it, I mean, are you okay? Are you too tired? Not yet. Um, we were talking earlier about Various types of audiences coming to your shows, new fans, the 
establishment. Is it important to you, somebody who has meant so much to the generation of the 60s, leading into the 70s, is it important to you at this point to reach a new generation? Well, you can't look at old fans and new fans. You must treat everyone as an equal. There, there, there's no respect to persons in, a, in an audience. There, you, somebody's been there 20, 30 years, great, but someone else has just got out of the crib, you know, 